Welcome back to the channel guys. Today is about to be a super stoked one. Today is the official day we are getting started on the parachute mount guys. This is the video everybody has been waiting for. This is the video I have been waiting for. This is gonna be one of the craziest videos I've ever done. First thing that I gotta say is, bear with me guys, I am not a welder by any means. So I'm gonna be learning throughout this process, so don't be surprised that it takes me a couple days to do this job, because I am taking my sweet ass time for this. <laughs> we have a lot of things to measure. We got a lot of things to weld. Um, I got the welding setup right here, as you guys seen in my last video of the whole welding setup that I had. You guys are gonna get a good glimpse of me using this today. So <laughs> this is gonna be exciting. So prepare, get some popcorn, get something. I don't know how long this video is gonna be. Sit down, watch this baby, subscribe to that channel, baby. Let's get to it. First things first, guys, we have to get this rear bumper off. So I think I'm gonna start cleaning up this area a little bit because the cleanliness of my work area is, the less stressed I am. So <laughs> let me go ahead and get super cleaned up on this whole area here. Let me just get everything clear. I may take it off of the little ramps here and push the car up a little bit. That way I have more clearance, like walk room back here. So let's go ahead and get this trunk hatch off. Let's get this bumper off and uh, let's do some measuring guys. Let's just get straight to the chase. just realized that I didn't hook my e-brake back up. So this thing would have, as soon as it came off the jack, would have been dripping straight on down that way. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and hook back up the e-brake real quick and uh, we'll get back to it. Hi, hi Katie. This is our neighbor's cat, <laughs> um, straight across the street over here. They just let the cat freelance outside. It's like the best, it like literally has the best life in the world. Every time I get started on any kind of garage projects, the cat always comes around and just checks it out and just is just super friendly. There is an orange one as well somewhere out there, but that one's more shy of people. But this white one literally come up to you every single time, which is like the best thing in the world. Um, I don't know where the hell it went. Oh, there it is. Hey kitty, hey kitty, hey kitty, come here. See how friendly it is? Hey, kitty. Yeah. Yeah. Sit the camera and say hello. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get back to it. E-brake is hooked back up. All you have to do is just zip in these three 12 millimeter bolts, and then you have to lift this thing up through the backside, straight through here, and put a little 10 mil bolts on that. And uh, that tightens up your e-brake. We are good to go ahead and put this baby down. So I'm going to put it down. Um, I'm probably gonna move it center of the garage. That way I have tons of walking space over there and I have tons of working space over here. So I'm gonna push it up, put it closer to the middle if I can by myself and uh, we're gonna get to it. Let's do it. Oh look, there's the orange cat. There's the orange one. <laughs> I swear that was the closest I've ever seen that orange one come to my house. That's awesome. It's actually kind of funny how light this car is right now. <laughs> I think without the doors and all the interior crap, it's like extremely light. I did end up having to take off the bumper just because uh, the jack wouldn't fit under the, the bottom there for a little bit. So I had to take off the bumper. Looking really good. I can't wait to paint that. I'm gonna have to paint that soon. I don't want any black to be shown or any blue to be showing. Um, but the interior is looking prime. It's on its own weight. Surprisingly, it is on its own weight right now. It looks so good. I cannot wait to see the parachute mount on it, but uh, it looks so good, guys. Like, keep in mind, I mean, obviously the front the front clip isn't on it right now, but <laughs> but it looks so good. Let's not waste no more time, guys. Let's just go ahead and get this rear bumper off so we can see what we're gonna be welding and what brackets we're gonna be making for this thing to fit up. So let's go ahead and get to it.
running into a little bit of an issue. <laughs> I, I totally forgot I don't have my car jack stands because they're sitting out here on the Drift Z and the Drift Z has no wheels on it. The suspension is torn apart. I don't have any jack stands. The only jack stand I have is actually this one. I can't find my other one, but these are for my truck out there. So <laughs> these are massive jack stands and I'm already maxing out the jack to where this side is jacked all the way up in on that jack stand. I'm just trying to jack up the lump in here right on the diff. And I was gonna put that jack stand like right on the diff. But what we're struggling with is the jack is already maxed out <laughs> and it's not lifting this side up high enough from that part. So what I'm gonna do is just put the jack back on this side over here and just leave it on the jack, lift it up here because I forgot that I have to take off my wheels in order to get my rear bumper off. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab the jack, put it on that side and just keep the jack on there as my jack stand. And uh, we're gonna go from there guys. So I'm um, putting you back on the time lapse. Let's go ahead and get this bumper off. It is so unnecessary to have my car jacked up this high. This is so unnecessary. <laughs> Looks cool though. <laughs> I was trying to get my lug nuts off and I figured out that my gun is dead. <laughs> Great. And the other bad part is when I was over here, I got off three lugs and there's one still on there. And then I was trying to use this to get it off, which is a really nice breaker bar. And the lug nut seized, guys. The fucking lug nut is seized. <laughs> like what? How? I don't even think I fully torqued these damn things down. <laughs> but they're seized. So now I just gotta wait for my gun to freaking charge up because it's 1200 torque. So I know this thing got it. But um, I'm probably just gonna have to break the lug off of it, guys. Um, hopefully none of these are seized, but. If they are, then we're gonna have to do this the hard way, guys. We're gonna have to get something in here to take this bolt out of the corner of this bumper here. Hopefully I don't have to do that. Hopefully this uh, thing can charge up fast enough and we can get these things off of the gun. It'll make it so much easier. <sighs> this is just the cost of working on cars. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and get to it, see if I can get these other lugs off and uh, we're gonna get it done, baby. Let's get it. Did break. Now, I got some more good news. Good news is I have like 10 of these extra studs because this is like bound to happen on these damn things just because of the metals they use in their freaking things and I don't know and probably over the years me over tightening shit so whew, I do have like 10 brand new of these studs so that's great. Now more bad news is I'm going to have to order these new or more lug nuts because I was already missing two or one on each side so I have to order new lug nuts for my race star just because they're wheels are just super super deep and you need these in order to get past the wheel diameter to the stud so or you just run extended studs you'll be all right but i don't have the extended studs so gotta order new lug nuts now i got this one off let's see if i can go ahead and get this one off that thing doesn't want to come off i need it to break for me i need it to break Freeze off penetrant. And there's the other stud. If you guys can't get anything to break, this works right away. Freeze off. So light.
That was actually a pain in the ass. <laughs> well guys, she's off. She is finally off. Look at that whole exposed rear end. <laughs> Had to do all this for the parachute mount. Looks good though, looks good. So as you can tell, this is our factory uh, bash bar that's on the rear. I think what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be welding this long tube to these brackets. Now, if that doesn't work, I'm gonna like finagle a way to weld something together. I gotta figure out what kind of metal this is here to make sure I'm welding the right metals together. And I have to make like a bracket probably to be able to bolt up to these that bolt up to the car. That way I can always take off my parachute mount as well. I don't wanna just weld it straight to the chassis and just always be permanent, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna go ahead and get this bash bar off and look at these brackets and see what I'm gonna have to fab up to be able to fit that perfectly. Let's see what we can do. Okay guys, now that that is off, I'm gonna have to make some kind of contraption to be able to bolt it up to here. Now I kinda got a little idea, but still not too sure. And again guys, I am not a fabricator by any means. And this got just a little bit harder just cause I'm not a fabricator. So I don't know my angles and all that stuff yet, but I sure can find them out. But if you look at the part that I took it off of, this part here bolts straight up to the actual chassis of the car. Um, but I was planning on making like a plate, but is but if you can see here, you see how it's kind of at an angle. See how it's like kind of like off to the side like that. It's not very straight, um, and it kind of it matches the curvature of the the bag bar as you can see. See how it kind of dips down there, dips down there straight here. Yeah, it kind of does that here on the rear, and they bent these in a way that that fits perfect. Now, that there is a piece of aluminum, so obviously I can't weld aluminum onto steel. So, it's out of the picture on using that for our bash, bound, bash bar mount. So we can't really use that unless we go all aluminum tubing, which I don't even think exists like that. But yeah, so I'm gonna have to make like steel plates that go into here that bolt up. I'll drill out these holes here and that will bolt up to this. And I'll probably do like an extra piece of tubing. I got an extra piece down there that I can cut, but I may need to buy the tools to cut it. But I'm gonna add little pieces onto the side, notch little pieces on the side, kind of like this. But they're gonna be really small pieces like that. And I'll weld that up to the plate. So that's kind of like my objective. Um, I don't know if that made any sense to you guys, but I guess you'll see as we go down. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna head over to Home Depot real quick, see if I can find some bigger pieces of steel that I can use to make as pieces for that. So uh, let's go over the head there now, and I probably gotta grab some extra tools probably from Harbor Freight um, to cut the steel too, but I do have a angle grinder, is probably the longest way to do it, but it's the cheapest way to do it right now. So let's go ahead and head over to Home Depot and see what we can find. How'd you even get up there? <laughs> I was thinking before I run off to Home Depot, I do have this little piece of like coupon steel that I was welding on. I'm wondering if I can use this for something. Um, I don't exactly know for sure yet, but I'm going to keep it in the arsenal just in case. But uh, let's head down to Home Depot and see if we can find some bigger like slabs of thicker metal here. So let's see what we can find. Cat is straight chilling. How you doing? All right, my hands are a little dirty. Alrighty guys, we are back. So we went to Home Depot, we grabbed two things of flat bar. I have no idea how this is gonna work. So this is either gonna break or make this uh, this build. Um, I was looking for the bigger pieces of steel um, for this part, but they didn't have any. So I guess what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna make my own. So I bought these two pieces of flat bar and I'm gonna cut them to the diameter that this is and I'm gonna weld those and weld them straight to the um, chassis here. And while I was gone, actually, the homie pulled up with his Japan Stasia right-hand drive and everything. Um, I'll show you guys that soon. Yeah, we went ahead and got some extra things, like some things for welding, um, just a wire brush, got some drill bits for metal, and um, of course the flat bar and everything like that. So we're gonna see how this kind of works. And uh, we're gonna see if we can, I don't know, just kind of like jimmy up something here. So um, let's see what we can do. The first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna measure 
how um, how wide and the, the length of this is. That way I can measure my flat bar up to it. And uh, we'll go ahead and get that welded up for you. And then we'll go ahead and drill the holes for each of these studs here. That way we can bolt it on here. And then our next objective is we're gonna take this pipe that we have here. We're gonna cut it at an angle to where it fits on here perfectly. And then that way we can weld it straight up to the bar and figure out the distance of how far we want it to sit out near the bumper. So. I think that's a pretty good idea so far, especially for being a complete beginner at this. One thing that I did notice too is my TIG setup. Um, I only, the biggest cup that I have is a six cup. Um, I believe you're supposed to use like m at minimum like an eight size cup. So I might have to run to the store and go get a different size cup. But um, I think this should do for now. I mean, while we're gonna be welding up flat bar, just making like a really flat coupon. So I think we'll, we should be all right. So let's get on the bench. Let's get everything kind of cleaned up over here and uh, start welding some, uh, a good size coupon for this. Let's do it. This is my boy, Savan. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? <laughs> hey, what's up? <laughs> You're done. <laughs> this is Stasia. Damn, this thing is clean. Sadly, he's selling it. Yeah. Yeah, but it's clean. Like to the T, right hand drive too. I think it's so clean. Yeah, we just actually had a guy here looking at it right now. Um, he, he likes it a lot. Sadly, we might have another guy that wants to pick it up before him, but he has a skyline as well. But this thing is on point, dude. Hell, you tossing around over there. Don't worry about it. It's papers. <laughs> it's <a> papers. <laughs> it is full. We got a lot of work to do on this Z. Like a lot of work. So I think we're just going to get down on it. And... Um, and uh, start making these brackets now. So I don't know what kind of metal this is, which is the scary part. Well, actually, no, it's not scary because the reason why is I'm avoiding it because I don't. Since I don't know what metal it is, I'm not gonna try to be all expertise and everything and try to figure out the metal. So I'm making that bracket that'll just bolt onto here, and I'll just put screws there and literally just tighten it up, and I'll weld to my new steel that I know is actually steel. You know what I mean? So. That's what we're gonna go ahead and tackle today. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm getting welding, guys, and measuring. Let's do it. All right, big dog. My boy, my boy Savan's leaving me. He's going to a show. Make sure you follow him. What's the what's the IG? Novaking.dubs. Dot what? Dot dubs. <laughs> dot got dubs. And no, I'm saying got like, dot. Dubs. <laughs> I'll link it right here in the description. Go follow my boy. He does hella good music. And he's about to do a tour next next year. Yeah, you ready for that life? Yeah, we're working on it. We're and make sure it. you guys like and comment this video. Subscribe for more crazy. <laughs> Nerdy <content>. ass motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody help him. <laughs> Start that YouTube channel too. So everybody can go follow it at YouTube. Let's get it. Yeah. Big dog. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, later, Pip. Bar is actually gonna sit closer to up here, I'm guessing. And this piece sits here like that. I don't know, guys. I'm just ranting because I don't even know where to fuck to start. I really don't know where to start, guys. <laughs> I really don't. It's nerve wracking. So like I said, I am taking this as slow as I can because I want it to be as perfect as I can. So don't expect me to get this all done in one day. I'm, I'm definitely thinking this is probably gonna be like a solid two or three days of work. So let me just go ahead and stop yapping and let me just go ahead and get to work. Let's get it. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and get making this plate. So this here is about six and a half inches long. And then we got about five and a half. Without getting too confused, I'm gonna start out with length. So we wanna go about six and a half on both sides, six and a half. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to our bar here and we're gonna measure six and a half and we're gonna mark it right there. And then we're gonna cut out another piece and another piece. That way we can match the five and a half length. So that's, uh, that's gonna be how we're gonna tackle this right now. So let me go ahead and get marking on this and I'm gonna pull out the saw and we're gonna go ahead and start cutting those out. We have got all of our pieces cut. Now, obviously we still have to clean and prep these, but these are gonna be our coupons. They're gonna sit exactly like this if I were to measure it. So remember I needed five and a half, or I'm sorry, um, yeah. Yeah, five and a half length here. Yep, yeah, about five and a half. If I measure it from here to here, 
over five and a half. If I measure it here, it is right around about six and a half, which is what I need for this portion. We're a little bit high, which is fine. As long as the plate sits there, we're okay. And then same goes for the other side as well. Still looking pretty good. Now, obviously these are not even. They're still gonna get um, bench grinded. But what I did is I just pretty much just attached the flat bar to the vise here. And I took my sawzall with a metal blade or a metal um, saw bit and I just cut it, just marked it and cut it. And uh, that did me pretty well. Now I'm gonna take the angle grinder with a sanding disc and completely strip these of um, complete metal. So I'll take off all this uh, coating off of there. That way we can weld it. Ran down to my local Harbor Freight and we got us a tube notcher, guys, because we're definitely gonna need that once we figure out what the angle is for this here so we can tie our tube into our longer tube here. And then we got some cutting oil. I don't know if I needed that, but I got it anyway because it was next to it. And then I also got a number eight cup, guys. That's exactly what I needed um, the most of, um, just to weld the chromoly and everything like that. We have finally grinded down and got it 50% prepped. Um, we got everything grinded down on these plates. As you can see, I got it down to raw metal on the sides, the front and the other side. What I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to go ahead and clean these. So I gotta do, give it an acetone bath and make sure I get all the contaminants, porosity, all that stuff out of it. I'm gonna be welding them like this. So this should be a pretty simple weld. This is kind of like what you learn in the beginning. And obviously I'm not an expert whatsoever. So I haven't had too much practice on a bunch of different corners, but this is one of the main ones that I've learned how to do. So I feel pretty confident that I can go ahead and weld these already. And then we're gonna find where our holes are gonna be. So we're gonna line our holes up and everything and just drill those straight out so the plate will go straight on. Depending on how good or bad the welds go, <laughs> I'll see, I might end up grinding down all the welds anyway, but I'll show you kind of what it looks like when I get done welding it and uh, we'll go from there. We are finally ready. We are getting the TIG torch and TIG set up rolling, baby. So of course we got a TIG torch here. I got my number eight cup on. Um, I usually shouldn't even use this cup until I at least get to the chromoly and stuff, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use it just to get used to it. Um, I'm gonna be spewing a lot of gas, but um, it's all right. I got a fresh bottle actually back here. So um, I got a number eight cup on here. Got my tungsten um, already grinded and everything to a fine, fine point. Got all of my metal all cleaned up really nice. Got my machine set up, just got it plugged in. I haven't even went over the settings yet. Luckily with this setup, it is super, super simple. I just gotta set my amperage and then uh, make sure it's on a DC because DC is steel and then AC is gonna be aluminum. So we're um, welding steel. So we gotta be on the DC setting. And then we gotta make sure we set our um, argon gas correctly on our regulator. So I'm gonna go ahead and play with a couple settings. This is not a how to weld video because I'm still learning how to do it myself. So I'm not gonna teach you all the settings and stuff like that on how I like to run it because I'm actually still learning as well. So for the filler rod that we're gonna be running, uh, we're gonna be running for all of my guys that know how to weld. Um, we're gonna be running ER70 S2 for the 332 seconds. I could go a little bit smaller than that, but I couldn't find anything um, uh, like a 16th um, smaller than that. So I'm just gonna use a 332 if that's what it says on here, how the thickness and like amperage and stuff I should go. So yeah, I'm gonna put on the helmet and uh, get welding, baby. So uh, let's go ahead and get to it. This is like my favorite part out of all of it. So let's see how she welds. Let's get it. Um, we got our machine set at 90 amps right now. Yeah, so we're gonna give that a shot real quick. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get my gloves on and uh, I'm gonna start with a couple tack welds first um, just to get everything put together and see how my gas flow really is. Um, Post flow is automatic on this. If you guys know what I'm talking about, if you don't, you can do some research. 
research if you ever decide you feel like you want to learn how to weld, but I feel like all car guys want to learn how to weld, so. I probably need filler rod. <laughs> all right, let's get jamming. We need more amps. Oh, it's about 100 amps. Get another one going. Nice little tax, look at that. Not too bad. I'm gonna put a couple tools on it just to kind of lay it flat so it doesn't warp too bad. I'm gonna give you guys kind of like a little view of what we got. Man, that dang machine is so loud. <laughs> so hopefully it's not messing up my voice. But now, now you can see kind of how my tools work. So my tools are clamping it all down because I noticed that when I first welded it without the tools, it made it warp a little bit. So um, now that I got it flat on each side of the table, um, as you can see, I tack welded it really nice. Good penetration. I actually went over the original tack just where I can throw some heat back into it. You can tell right here, it was a really cold tack. Um, I didn't let it heat up enough, but um, on the other ones, I got it down pretty perfect. So. That's looking good. Process is looking good. Let's go ahead and weld that other plate to the back side of here now. I got everything tack welded as you can see my crazy hold down <laughs> tools here are going crazy on this thing. I do not want this thing warping at all. Um, but as you can see inside of there, I got a good tack in the middle and I was able to tack actually the sides of the coupons without using any filler, which was awesome. I'm going to go ahead and take off um, some of these tools. We're probably just going to go ahead and get welding guys because it's tacked up pretty nicely. Go ahead and just finally just finish this piece so we can move on to the next ones. So I'm just going to go ahead and get welding and I'll just show you the finished product. All right, let's do it. Check me out. Check out these welds, guys. That was my first weld in like two months, y'all. No, nah, like a month, actually. Um, but I've only, keep in mind, I've only been welding for, what, a month and a half, two months, actually. Um, so check me out, guys. Let me know how my, my, uh, my welds are. I think they look really good for being a beginner. But look at this, guys. That is what I laid down. Now, obviously not the prettiest welds, but it's better than what you would see straight out the gate. You can see kind of where I started here and then I stopped because you can see like the little heat wave here or the uh, how much uh, heat went into the part. You can see it slopes down right here. That's exactly where I stopped to let it cool down. Started again there and I moved out. And as you can see, as farther than I moved out, the wider that heat ring kind of went. Um, in welding, you wanna keep that heat ring as consistent as possible. As you can see, mine's kind of all over the place because I'm starting, stopping, starting, stopping. Now, obviously, I'm not perfect, but look at those. I'm not going to necessarily call them dimes, but look at that. It looks almost pretty uniform, huh? For welding for my first time, well, not for my first time, but just a little bit of practice, only a month and a half, two months uh, of uh, ever welding. I think that looks fire, guys. Oh, that went good, guys. That was so great. And that was actually at set at 110 amps, but I was also working the foot pedal. So with the, how the foot pedal is exactly like your gas pedal. So full throttle obviously is gonna give you a full 110 amps, but if you let off like halfway, it's gonna give you about 50% of throttle, 70%, 80%, 90%, 100%. 
So just like your regular gas pedal, I'm gonna go ahead and let this thing cool down and I'm gonna go ahead and tackle that top section and uh, let's see how she sits up guys. Boy Daniel showed up. Hello. What's up? He said hello. <laughs> Nerd. Yeah. All right, y'all. We got one plate finished. Looks so good. That's one plate there. So now you guys can kind of see what we're doing. So um, what I ended up doing actually is I grabbed just some like regular assembly lube right here, and I actually just put it on the tips of the threads here, and then I used the uh, the plate. Like, let's say if I grab this plate again, so grab that plate and I kind of just put it on here like that and that way it marked the back of it so I knew exactly where to drill at. And um, yeah, and it literally just drill those out, put that back on. After all that, now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be getting some tube, not this one obviously, that's for the parachute. We're gonna be getting some tube, figure out the angles and we're gonna be welding it to that plate there. That way it can hold the bash bar all the way out and then we can start building our parachute stuff. Shit's a hassle. Okay. It's a hassle. It's a lot. <laughs> be me. <laughs> yeah, shit's crazy. For being the first project, it's a pretty extensive project, not gonna lie. The well's looking fire though. Say less. But yeah, we're about to go ahead and get cranking out. Um, I wanna get this side done, at least get both of the plates done. And then I think we're gonna call it a night. Yeah, that's pretty pretty solid. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, get the measurements, and uh, I'll show you how it's done real quick. I'm gonna put it on the edges, just so it just covers. Right there, just like that. Nothing crazy, just a little dab. Just like that, and then what we're gonna do, Take it off the welding table real quick. And then we're gonna take the back side and we're just gonna stick it where we want it. Just like that. And then it made our little holes. Boom, 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 boom. Just drill them. We're gonna start small first and then we're gonna work our way up. Boom, just like that. And then we'll just drill some holes. Let's get into it. Woo! That whole gonna buck you now. That's like. <laughs> I know she uh, put a weld with the back side of these. You know, she's taking a lot. I might go ahead and weld the back of him, but mm. I didn't crack one. Woo! I felt that one about the tape. Look at that, perfect spiral. Damn, what the <laughs> Oh, just like that. Got our holes drilled. All right, and it's technically gonna be the same shit, so I'll go ahead and just knock to the next slide. Let's get it. If you guys ever get the chance, use this stuff right here. Some cutting oil, I actually got it from Harbor Freight. It sprays on kind of like a foam, as you can see. It sprays on kind of like that. And then this stuff cuts, it cuts straight through it. Ready? Look at that. 
Leave smoke everywhere. God damn, it was hot. <laughs> <laughs> Shit got over me. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you're wearing your safety glasses, because I'm not. <laughs> Way go. I didn't get mad at you to come back for not wearing safety glasses. For real, bro. <laughs> I was doing that in my last one when I was painting the car too. Like that's so dangerous. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I like to live on the wild side. <laughs> All right, so now um, I think I'm a little too tight on the bottom. Okay, yeah. So this one's gonna be bigger. All right, gonna go big, daddy. This one gets caught up pretty good. go. All right, let's see if it was just that one. All right, let's see. There it is. Got a plate. And that's how you do it, baby. All right, guys, before I end up calling it a night, I just wanted to kind of mock this up for you so you can kind of see where we're going here. Now, obviously, I don't have a tube bender at all, so I'm going to have to kind of work this in a way that I can do it my own self without taking it to anyone. Um, I really don't want to have to buy a bender um, just because of how expensive they are. And I want to kind of keep this budget kind of low, especially that, I mean, that's the only reason why I'm doing it. If I'm going to spend a lot of money, I might as well just send it to someone. You can kind of see what we're going with here. So you see the bar is going straight across. I just got it held up by this little jack stand right here. But um, as you can see, you see that angle. Um, I'm just going to have to calculate that angle and I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut some tube out here um, just a little bit just to fit behind back here and like uh, have it match up really well with the tube. I'm gonna weld that together. It's looking pretty good, not gonna lie. Just the simple fact that I'm welding this right now, like I was always scared to weld and I don't know why, but I guess I just got the courage to start doing it and I'm having so much fun doing it. I think I'm gonna go ahead and call it a night. It's already about 12 o'clock, so um, I still need to make some food before I go to bed and wake up in the morning. Uh, I do have work in the morning, so we're probably gonna continue this the day after or after work. So I will see you guys on the next slide. One eternity later. Alrighty guys, it is officially day two of doing the parachute mount, guys. Um, literally just got off work not too long ago, put on some clothes and immediately got out here. Plates are on and now I got my little piece of tube here that I'm actually gonna cut to about two and a half inches. I mock things up. So here's the, the bar here. So I had the bar sitting somewhat like this, like that. So I'm noticing there is a really, really tiny gap there. So what I wanna try to do is try to get a piece back there that can fit up really well with the, uh, with the bar here. Now obviously it's not gonna be pressed against this like this, it's gonna be kinda like coming out here like that. So that's why I'm doing a two and a half inch to kind of match what the OEM specs were kind of pushing it out to. So we're gonna go ahead and start cutting this. I'm gonna cut it about two and a half inches right now here. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and either take the angle grinder or we're gonna take the tube notcher and notch it up to what we, to what's gonna be preferred for this uh, angle. So let's go ahead and get to it guys. Got our little pieces cut right here. So now we have those two little pieces. Now the objective with these are to, of course, stick them on the ends right here. That way the pipe can be there. But as you can see, it's still angled. So I'm gonna need to zero this out. So I'm gonna have to bring this kind of sideways like this to kind of straighten it up so the pipe can actually lay on there flat. As you can see, there's a little bit of angle that I'm gonna have to do there. Instead of using the tube notcher for that, I'm actually just gonna use the um, angle grinder and kind of just grind down until I get the angle that I'm actually looking for there. That way I don't have to do so much measuring. So I'm just going to kind of do it the long way and uh, just keep grinding down until it's pretty much flat and straight and zero kind of this way. And that way I can weld this to the plate and then we should be good to roll. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. So I'm going to go ahead and put you back up on the stand and uh, we're going to get figured out on this. So let's get it done.
bit of update. As you see, we were able to get it. Um, it's not pretty, but do you see the angle that I put on that? Did it pretty good with just the angle grinder there. Um, obviously, it's not perfect, but I deburred it and got all the burring off of it. I obviously got to clean this up before I weld it, but look at that. Goes on just like that, and look how straight it is. Bringing it right back. Perfect, and that's exactly what we need. I think I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the other side. That way I don't have to do that process again um, later. So, and then we'll go ahead and start notching um, the, uh, this back side here for the actual tube. Let's get into it, baby. Some progress done. We got the other side done over there. Now we got everything kind of mocked up. Obviously this is not final product because I still have tube notcher, which is behind me. I want to show you that because it looks really cool. But um, as you can kind of see, um, this is how we're going to kind of run it. So I got it held on my magnets right now. I just got the jack and that one jack stand over there to hold the bar up. Now, obviously it's not even right now. So I do gotta do some measurements and stuff to make sure they're both even on both sides. But this is how it's gonna sit when it's welded. Look at this. <laughs> we got the Harbor Freight um, tube notcher set up going on right now. So um, I do need to go to the Home Depot and go get the hole saw bit that matches the pipe. This is it, guys. Luckily, I'm not gonna be doing anything crazy. I kind of just set this up for demonstration for you guys, but that is the tube notcher. So the hole saw part will go here, and then you'll take this little pin out right here, and then this will free float up and down. That way you can go right down onto your pipe and cut it at whatever angle. And you can see right here, they have all the angles that you may need to cut the pipe at. So um, this thing is freaking awesome. For only like 60 bucks, this thing is on point. <laughs> I love it. Now we have one little issue. <laughs> so, I mean, this wasn't, wouldn't be a project if there wasn't issues. So the issue that I am running into right now is the pieces that I cut. Now they're perfect for the car and the length that I need, but the issue about it is the tube notcher can't hold it because it's too tiny. So I could either notch this with the angle grinder, which would be just kind of like some extra work, um, just kind of like how I did for the angles for that pipe, that piece, or I could cut out the the um, uh, radius cut or the notcher that I the notch that I need first, and then cut out the length on that. But that means I'm just gonna have to restart the angle process for that again, which. I think I'm cool with because doing that wasn't too bad. I feel like doing this cut and making it good and even for the pipe is going to be a lot more important. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and do this and cut it out since I have this little extra piece anyway. Yeah. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started on that. Notch this for the first time and see how that goes. And uh, we'll see how it comes out. And if it comes out like crap, then I'm just going to go to the angle grinder. So let's see how this notches. Let's get it. finally got our two little pieces cut perfectly um, as you can see here what I'm doing now is I'm just checking to make sure it's plumb um, which it is it is on point now I just got to go back in and make um, the little curved angle here to be able to fit on the plates and then uh, we should be able to start cleaning things up and getting ready to weld which is gonna be the goal for tonight. So hopefully I can get the bar on tonight. It's kind of what I'm hoping to do. The welding goes by pretty fast. Um, it's just all the prep work of getting this stuff to the right spec is the hardest stuff. I was able to get my notches pretty tight, 
which is awesome. I might have an issue over here. My notch is pretty tight around there, but the issue I'm having is up here. It's a little bit of a gap, but I'm probably gonna have to add some extra thick filler to be able to get that, but I don't know guys, but we're gonna, we're gonna see how it goes. This side got pretty, pretty good. We got it pretty steady on that side, so. We are on. This is awesome. All right, so I got everything mocked up. I got it prepped and clean, as you can see. Boom, so we got the curved notches done for the plates there. So we're gonna mount up there. And here I got it all magnet on there as well. Now I do have to move this bar over a little bit because it's a little bit off as you can see, tad bit just there. And then we got a lot of bit of pipe over here. So I gotta move this over some. That way it matches on both sides and it's pretty symmetrical. Looking pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and move this over and then we'll go ahead and get tack welding on, this, on those two pieces. So. guys we got everything tacked I got two little tacks on there holding pretty good I don't know if you guys noticed inside of the um, time lapse there um, I actually went to go tack it and I actually dunked the tungsten in the uh, <laughs> in the uh, weld puddle so I had to get up and re-grind it so um, but I got the attacks back in there not the prettiest tacks in the world you can tell I put a lot of heat into that one because like I said remember I had the little gaps so I had to fill in the gaps which was crazy but um, I got that part tacked so that's very nicely well done. And then on this side was pretty easy, tacked up those two sides, that way it just holds it for now. So far the fitment is looking really good on both sides. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take the bar off and then I'm just gonna bring it over to the table and I'm just gonna weld those pieces um, together. Okay, now you guys kind of got a better idea of what I'm doing here. Um, so you can see my two little tacks that I put there. I'm gonna put a couple more tacks here in the back, that way I know it's holding pretty well. And then over here, I'll probably, um, we got those two tacks, I'll probably put two more tacks back here just to kind of snug it on. Looks like we got really good penetration back there too, which is awesome. Welds are definitely not gonna be pretty, but um, again, I'm only learning. So um, I've only been doing this for about two months, so TIG welding is not my skill, if you would say, but um, I'm starting to get it down. I'm starting to get a little comfortable, but just, let's just give it a shot, um, to be honest. And it's cheaper for me to do it than just take it to somebody else. So, so far, it's not looking like a hack job. It's looking pretty good so far. So um, let me go ahead and put some tack on the back of these two uh, pieces and uh, we'll go from there. This is tough, <laughs> like definitely practice more 
before you start doing like chromoly like piping and stuff because it it's a bit different like you can't just walk the puddle which is like super weird i'm not hacking it up too bad but they're definitely not perfect by any means but but i'm putting too much heat into the parts so i'm letting them sit for a little bit longer than than necessary but i thought i'd just show you what's kind of going on but like as you can see there not the best um weld in the world now i will get the job done but as you can see all this bluing that's right here it's just showing that I'm putting way too much uh, heat into the part. And then you can kind of see it like where it starts to get kind of ashy down here. Just to show you that I, like, I pretty much cooked the metal in there. I put so much filler in there that it's, I don't, I don't even know. I'm pretty sure it's penetrating good because I put so much heat into it. But um, this side over here, I kind of just started with the tack. I kind of tacked twice and then um, I just started cooking it, which started to get that little pit there. And then up here, kind of did the same thing as you can see. I don't know if you can see that or not, but definitely got good penetration um, and everything, but not the prettiest welds, uh, prettiest welds by any means, but it will get the job done. Um, I just want to make sure I go all the way around it and just uh, kind of just keep it simple, um, but I'm trying to keep as much heat out of the part as I can, so I'm letting them sit for a lot longer than, than necessary. If I ever were to do this again, I would make sure I have no gaps whatsoever when <laughs> putting chromoly piping and stuff together like when I do notches and stuff this stuff has to be like on point like it has to be no gaps at all because like messing with these gaps are hideous like it's it's horrendous trying to mess with these gaps because you have to put like so much filler and you like shouldn't do that but I mean it's holding pretty strong but I'm just gonna go over it probably like once or twice all right guys the the bar is not fully welded yet um, but I just wanted to stop real quick because the parts cooling down I actually got it over here on the car right now all I gotta say is it's tough y'all it is tough to weld chromoly practice before you do it um, I'm cooking this part, but hey, it's okay. It's okay because it actually does look good and I know it will do the job I'm not overcooking it still looks kind of good But um, it, it you could definitely tell it has a lot of heat in the part I filled in the gaps as best as I could now keep in mind <laughs> the welds are not perfect looking but it's together the melt the metal is melted and everything is stuck together properly look at this one so I haven't fully finished this one, but I had a huge gap actually right here but um <laughs> the well it i mean it'll do the job don't get me wrong it'll do the job it ain't pretty by any means but hey tell me not though I, we it's welded like a motherfucker <laughs> i looked on the inside too it's it's uh it's got some good heat penetration through it too right there you can clearly see it looks like that other side but if you look over here see that gap still right there those are the gaps that i'm filling guys it it sucks <laughs> so Next time you wanna, if you ever wanna do this job, make sure this piping is damn near flush. Like I'm talking so flush, it, it's, it surprises you that um, to be able to weld that properly. But if you're messing with all these gaps, don't even mess with it. You're just wasting gas, you're wasting filler rod, and it's, it's really annoying, but I'm only a beginner. But once we get all of that fully um, welded, we're gonna go ahead and start tacking it to our plates here. Okay, while that's cooling, I went ahead and just knocked out another task that I'm supposed to do a little bit later. Um, I decided I'm just gonna go ahead and weld this up while that one's cooling down. I'm just gonna go ahead and weld this piece up together. It's just a piece that came with the kit. It's, an, it's a bolt that's supposed to go through here, and then this is the part that slides into that middle section that goes in the middle right here. So I thought I'd just weld that up since it's just sitting there and I'm just sitting here, so kind of bored. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and tack weld this up and uh, maybe even weld it all the way up, depending on how it's working with me. <laughs>
It is now 1.30 in the morning, guys, and I am almost finished. Finally almost finished. We are on the last part of getting the stuff welded, so now we are gonna go ahead and, and tack weld them to the plates on the car, all right? And that's literally what my goal was tonight, was to just get it tack welded onto the back, and surprisingly, it's taken me really long to actually get to this point. Um, this fab stuff is no joke, guys. Like, it takes a lot of time, and, and you wonder why you pay so much money to these fab shops to get this stuff done, because, man, th it, it's a lot of work to make it perfect. Go ahead and get these tack welded up to the car, um, and uh, we'll call it a night, and then I'll see you guys in the morning. Guys, it is officially day three of the parachute build, baby. And I am so stoked on how far we've come already. Um, this has been one hell of a job, as you guys can already see. I'm starting this day three on absolutely just hopes and dreams right now. <laughs> now, this has been a very intriguing, a very daunting, and a very huge learning experience for me because I as you guys know I do not know how to weld for real all right if anybody tells you that you cannot weld or start any other kind of project and you are just spending too much money sending stuff out to shops I just say try to save money go buy something try to do it yourself or at least want to see if you're good at it or not and uh, that's gonna dictate pretty much what you want to do um, and I can definitely guarantee you if you get into this on your own and it comes out of success, you're gonna wanna tackle every single thing this way. I am super happy with where we're at right now. As you can see, the bar is actually on the 350 right now. 350 is looking beefy. I mean, we made a huge mess in this garage just to get this little pieces on here. And I had a chance to organize everything before I started the video today. But um, as you can see, everything is cluttered everywhere. But um, we still got a bunch of grit and stuff on top of our box and everything like that. And it's, it was one hell of a cleanup. We are about to get back started today. As you can see, we got um, our bar welded up. The welds are not great, so don't, don't bash me in the comments, but they hold, y'all, they hold. Look at that, so weld is not good. <laughs> okay, so don't laugh at me too hard, but all I need to know is if it holds, and it is a solid weld. And if you don't think <laughs> that this is strong, let me show you. Let me just show you guys. Let me, let me set you down here real quick. This thing is strong, guys, look at this. Ready? That's full body weight, jumping. Look at that, strong. No cracks, no damage, straight strong. And I am 215 pounds. <laughs> so I'm sure that can hold a parachute <laughs> without coming off. <laughs> but let's just go ahead and get back into it today, guys. Let's get it. Okay, guys, first thing first, we are gonna have to put on our rear bumper to make sure this metal bar that I made fits behind the bumper because if you guys don't know the parachute comes out of the bumper um, and then it kind of angles up outside of that bumper so I'm gonna have to put this rear bumper on to make sure it fits so that's what I'm gonna do now looks a little close the bumper fits y'all look at that beautiful the bumper fits our next objective is to grab this little pipe here and this here is supposed to go onto the bar right there so it's going to come through the bumper like this now obviously i don't need this much material so i'm just going to have to measure and see how much i need but um i'll guide you guys through the process let's just go ahead and get it started so you guys can see it let's get to it so i'm gonna have to tack weld this up and figure out how far this sticks outside the bumper i want to make this really flush with the bumper that way when i go in to put the other insert in it's really flush first we gotta start by cleaning all of this material and cleaning the, the pipe right there to make sure we have no, no uh, contamination inside the metals when we go to weld it. So let's, I say let's go ahead and get started on it.
Okay guys, I kind of got it set up. It's honestly looking pretty good. That looks like a pretty good spacing for the actual parachute. So I'm wondering if I don't even have to cut that much. Now I know this part is supposed to be pretty flush with the bumper down here, but with how far this rod or this, the other piece goes into there, I feel like I'm gonna need some of that. Um, poking out that way it, it, it can maintain its wobbling. It looks pretty good I feel like I won't be able to tell until I actually get the bumper on if I do any cutting It's probably gonna be on this bar So as you can see That I have about this much more space That I can go in before it touches this here So I'm wondering if I just cut off on the end of this bar uh, About that much or maybe about half of that and then I can stick the, the bar in a little farther and maybe I can bring this a little bit closer to the car, which would be, which would be cool. Um, I think I might end up doing that. It's the easiest route. And I don't know if I wanna cut any of this per se. So I guess that's gonna be the plan. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this part back out and just cut it probably about, uh, I would say about an inch, inch and a half off. Um, as you can see, I didn't cut it all the way. I just did it just a little bit because of course when I weld this, it's gonna add kind of like a little layer of metal there and I don't want it to hit it. So I just did about a half of that, what we just saw. I cut about this much off of the pipe and this is actually the pipe that I cut off. So good and it pushed it a lot closer to the rear bumper, which is awesome. That's kind of what I want. I want kind of like a, a really tight fit. What we should go ahead and do is go ahead and tack weld this piece up. That way we don't have to keep holding it by magnets and a jack stand. So I'm not gonna weld it up fully, just gonna tack it for now. That way I can take it off if there's any mistakes. So let's go ahead and tack up that little piece first and uh, get the bumper test fitted and see what we have to cut out, what we have to change and things like that. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Tack well coach. <laughs> Your boy knows how to tack well, y'all. <laughs> Let's go ahead and grab this rear bumper and we're gonna try to take some rough measurements on um, on how I'm gonna have to cut this bumper. But I'm gonna have to get it lined up perfectly to be able to cut the proper hole because I do not want to cut a bunch of holes in my bumper and make it look all ugly. So I need to make one good solid hole and uh, that's what we're gonna have to run with. So um, let's try to do it as perfect as we possibly can. I ain't gonna lie, my measurements are a little chopped and screwed, okay? <laughs> so what I did is I took the bumper and I tried to put it on as best as I possibly could and line it up on both sides. Now obviously it wasn't gonna push all the way up top because that bar was hitting the bumper already. And I took a marker, went in behind it and kind of traced the outside of the uh, this bar here. And this is what I got. Okay, so that's what I got out of that. All right guys, this is how we're gonna do it. So I got my hole saw bit. Um, I'm just gonna angle this directly over the hole that I need cut. And then I got my Sharpie here. And if you, if you look behind the hole saw bit there, um, I can actually put my Sharpie through that little hole to know where I'm gonna drill. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and just slide this over the hole. Make sure it's exactly center from where you marked it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take our Sharpie straight down the middle and mark it. And that right there is where you're gonna drill. So that right there is where I'm gonna go ahead and put a little drill bit through. Let's go ahead and put a little uh, hole in there. All right, we got the hole in there. This probably has to be the most scariest part that I've ever done with this so far. <laughs> so, so I'm trying to take it careful. But um, it's leaving me with no choice and just to guess it, so. All right, I got it set up on the other side here. So you can see where I made my little hole. So now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna put tape around this whole area here. That way I don't mess up the paint when I go to drill the hole saw through. So I'm gonna put some tape on here, just kind of hold the paint steady, and uh, we're gonna go from there. All right guys, it's time. <laughs> this is so sketchy. I'm about to ruin my bumper. <laughs> oh God, I hope this is right. <laughs> I really hope this is right. Life goes on guys, let's get it done. One eternity later. My 
beloved paint, my beloved bumper. Oh, I really hope this is fucking right. <laughs> I really hope this is right. Because that is a big asshole, y'all. That's what she said. <laughs> oh, let me bring you guys over here. All right, guys. That's our hole. It is a nice, beautiful hole. <laughs> what? You know what? Never mind. Let me, let me just stop talking. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. Let's freaking go, y'all. Oh my God. Let's go. Damn, I just want to bolt this bumper up already, but we're not, we're not complete yet. But look at that. We got it, guys. We got it. So freaking sick. Now, obviously, there's still a lot of work to do, um, but I am so glad we made it to this part right here. This has to be the most special moment in my entire life because that was absolutely scary. Alrighty, y'all already know what I'm up to. Um, I'm about to go ahead and notch this little parachute tube um, and see if we can get it flush on the backside of that there. So let's go ahead and get moving on this. Um, I mean, you guys already seen me notch something before, so I'm not gonna show you this right here because it does take a little bit. I'm gonna have to sand it and just get it all perfect. So let me just go ahead and knock this out and uh, we'll get mounted on there. All right, guys. I got to say, my notch is looking solid. Look how on point that notch is. The box actually came with some bolts. Now there's some bolts in this spacer here are supposed to go through this middle piece. And then you have another one that's supposed to go through here to hold that piece in place. So I have to drill a hole straight through here, through this pipe, back out the other end and make sure it's completely straight. That way I can put that bolt and nut in here to hold it in place. So. That's what I'm gonna be doing next. As you can see, I already got my heavy duty drill right here. Um, getting ready to uh, powerhouse a freaking drill bit through that. So um, let's go ahead and get started with that. We got the first drill bit through, looking really good. Now it's time to get the big daddy in there and finish it off. Well, guys, I fucked up, <laughs> and I admit it. <laughs> Our hole is definitely off. <laughs> so I ran past my car trying to get something, and I literally, my, my knee hit the tack welds and broke everything off. I hit it shit hard, too. Like, my shin hurts. It has, like, a fat-ass bump on it from doing it. Um, and it knocked off all of my tack welds, or I only put, really, two tack welds in it, but now I don't know the location of where it was anymore. So now if you actually look in this hole, you can see it points straight right there. And our bar is literally right up there. So that means it's gonna have to be drilled somewhere right here just to match up with that bar. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill another big hole here, unfortunately, and I'm just gonna make it all nice and pretty and make it kind of like an oval here. That way it looks uniform and I'll put some like, um, like dress it up a little bit with some like rubber so uh we'll see how that turns out but um yep that is a fuck up guys you guys get the picture now how good does that look still looks really good that's what we're working with so i'm gonna go ahead and get this thing tacked back up and uh we should be good to roll Alrighty, guys we are back in the safe zone <laughs> okay so look, we got it all tack welded up and it fit perfectly. I don't know how the hell I did it. I don't know how I got it so perfect, but we did it guys. Took a while, but I got it perfect. I got it dead square in the middle. I tried to make it look like a complete like uniform oval. That way it looks like I tried to do it like that. It didn't look like I just hacked it all up, but um, came out really good guys. Came out really good. Just like that guys. Got her in, bolt all the way through. Now we're just gonna go ahead and bolt this thing up sand this baby down and then we're gonna get our pole on there and uh we should be almost done um i got it all prepped and cleaned up on both ends so i'm okay to go ahead and give it a tack weld on each side there yeah that way we can get it all perfectly on there but you can see that tube is lined up perfectly guys i don't know if you can tell by the camera because the camera's on a wide angle so it's gonna make it look kind of warped but wow this is looking so good, guys. We are so close. Let's just go ahead and just wrap up this build already because I am so, so tired of doing it already.
just like that, guys. We have got it. We are so close to being done. Look at this thing, guys. Look at it. It is fully welded up. I got the plate welded up. I got the bar welded up. Everything is fully welded. Um, not my best work, <laughs> so don't quote me too bad on the on the welds, but low-key. Got it fully welded in the back. Now, obviously, it's not the best in the world, but I do have good heat penetration, which is perfect. Um, down here, I kind of just globbed it all up. It's just fucking horrible, but I'm going to grind it down and make me the weld that I always was. <laughs> so that's going to look good when it's done, but everything is nice, spick and span. Everything's straight. Oh my God, we are almost there, guys. We're probably like 90% done right now. Um, that cut looks pretty good down there too. Looks perfect. Like it was meant to be there like that. Um, the last thing I gotta do is I gotta weld this bar um, to the actual bash bar back there. Um, I only still have that tacked for now just cause I was making sure everything lined up. But um, yeah, that's, I would say that's about it guys. And then we are fully done with the uh, Z build. And I know it's been a long, long episode. And thank you guys so much for staying here with me watching this and watching me do it for the first time. Hopefully this uh, motivates you guys to do some of your own work sometimes and just like, just appreciate the uh, the time and the flow that you are, are putting into your build. It's just like the best thing in the world, especially when it's done and actually looks the way you wanna look it or make it look. So I would say, let's go ahead and get this rear bumper taken off and uh, let's go ahead and weld that piece together so we can be finally done with this thing. We'll put everything back together, put the, put the uh, trunk hatch back onto it and everything. And uh, we should be about done, guys. Let's just go ahead and knock it out. Let's just get it out of the way. All right, let's get into it. Ladies and gents, we are all finished with the Z and it looks so good. Bruh, I don't even know what to say, y'all. This parachute mount gives it a whole new character. I wish I already had the, the uh, parachute actually on there, but um, I didn't order it, so I need to order it tonight. But, golly. This thing's gonna be a trooper, y'all. But I just wanna thank y'all so much for watching this super, super long video of me trying to put this parachute mount on. Um, I just wanna thank y'all again for all of the support that you guys have been showing um, on the channel and just how fast we are growing um, as a channel. And I mean, don't, don't stop it just there. Go ahead and hit that subscribe, that like button. I got a whole bunch of new stuff coming for this car, y'all. Um, we still gotta put on the doors. We still got to get a new hood for the uh, car. We, obviously, we still got to do all the 2JZ engine work, which is going to be really fun. Um, we got new seats coming in. We got to put the carpet in. We got so much stuff to do on this car, guys. And what we did today was not even a quarter of it. So um, hit that subscribe. Hit that like button. Go down in the comments and tell me what you guys think I should change or what I should what I should do to it next. But um, I got a whole bunch of new things coming out for it. With that all being said, y'all. I'm super, super tired. It's like 3 o'clock in the morning, and um, I'm ready to go to bed. So y'all have a good one. We'll see you next video. Let's get it.